Well, here we are at the end of the day. I hope that you found a lot of value. You had the chance to meet other people and gain some insights as well as get questions answered from our experts. It's really been a delight and a privilege to bring this program to you today. And we all look forward to seeing you on another program sometime this year, or maybe at a live event. And maybe perhaps we'll be able to do this program as a hybrid next year and we'll have the chance to meet some of you. So I was asked today to share a little bit of my personal story. Many of you may have heard my story, but I'm guessing many of you have not. So in everything that I do, I always share that I am a patient, but many of you may not know how my journey has been and how I've gotten here. So we thought this would be a good opportunity for me to share a little bit about me personally and my experience with cutaneous lymphoma as we end, end our great international program today. So my journey started back in 1991, believe it or not. It was really a long time coming, a uh, long time ago, actually. And although it seems like yesterday, to be quite honest with you. And similarly, uh, I was just embarking on my professional career. I was in my early 30s and had gotten my first job in sales and marketing with a, um, a software company in healthcare and kind of serendipitous looking back at it. But yeah, and, and do not, yes, it was the 90s. So, you know, hair was different then. And I certainly look different now, right? But I really was enjoying starting my career, hanging out with my friends, looking forward to a really great future. And similarly to all of you, I had this really strange rash around my waist and it just didn't go away. And I went uh, over the course of a year to, I think, five different dermatologists. And probably similar to many of you, you know, they gave me lotions, steroid potions, all that kind of stuff, but it never went away and it was itchy and it was annoying. And I finally went to a dermatologist on my lunch break and she took one look, right? They do that little funky thing with the up close eyeglasses and look at your skin, which is, yeah, a little bit um, moralizing sometimes. But she took one look, listened to my history from the last year and said, hmm, I think you have a rare lymphoma. I'm referring you to a specialist. I live in Philadelphia, so I was very fortunate to have a specialist here back in the early 90s. And I'm taking a biopsy. And I went, whoa, really? That was the first time anybody had done anything other than just look at my skin. So I love this slide because I think maybe this is how all of you felt when you received your diagnosis. Out of the blue, hit you like a ton of bricks. Like what? I thought this was just a skin condition that I just needed to find the right cream and make it go away. And now you're telling me I have this rare cancer. Like it's hard to wrap your head around that. And back in the nineties, we had no internet. You know, there were, there was not easy access. You know, there was no Google, even though now we have Google and sometimes that's not a good thing. But back in those days, there was no way to get any access to information. And when I landed with the specialist in Philadelphia, he basically told me, well, you have this rare lymphoma called mycosis fungoides. What weird terminology is that? Uh, but early stage and the line was, you will live with it and not die from it. And I thought, okay, let's go get the big guns and we'll get rid of it. And I'll be living my life, you know, after all of this. And he said, no, no, no. That's really not the way this works. 
Um, what really is beneficial, especially for you in this early stage disease, which will probably never progress to anything more challenging is we do light therapy. And then we didn't really even have UVB. We had UVA, so PUVA. Some of you may have been on PUVA where you take the Sorlin and then you go stand in the big light box. And I did that. And with the UVA treatments with PUVA, you know, you have to wear the little funky glasses for the day. And my boss at the time nicknamed me Susie Sprocket. And I thought, oh, that's so funny. Yeah, you know, not a big deal. I got through it. It was good. My disease um, kind of didn't all totally disappear, but it became under control. Sadly for me, and strangely, my physician, who at the time was, was one of the global experts in the field who had dedicated his life to taking care of and researching cutaneous lymphomas, Dr. Eric Vonderheide, I was so lucky to be under his care because my disease progressed over the course of about a five-year window. And I ultimately ended up in tumor stage by 1998. I had tumors all over my body. Uh, the itch, as I know many of you can appreciate, was unimaginable. I wasn't sleeping. I was still working full time in an outward facing sales job, rather difficult. I had a tumor over my eye. My face was scabby and red and my, I had tumors in my scalp. It was very, very challenging. And I had pretty much come to the end of my treatment options because back in the late nineties, there weren't a lot of other treatments on the table. I was able to do a round, uh, actually it took me three months, quite frankly, to do uh, the electron beam radiation. So some of you, if you've had electron beam radiation for your disease are familiar with this lovely big machine and what, how it works. Um, they had to radiate my head. So in this picture, yes, that's me bolted to the table, which is an interesting experience in and of itself. So they did five segments on the front of my head, and then they had to flip me over and do four on the back. And then they did, quite frankly, I had tumors and patches and plaques pretty much everywhere. So every portion of my body ended up uh, doing targeted electron beam radiation. They, back in those, in the late nineties, they weren't really doing total skin electron beams. So this is, was my opportunity or my options at the time. And then we followed up with uh, interferon injections. And for me, by, the, by September of 1998, I, my tumors had all dissolved. My skin looked normal. My hair was gone. Um, they took me up to the point of total hair loss and didn't tell me. But I came out of that. And I think the biggest thing for me was, holy mackerel, I got my face back. And I think for any of you that might be grappling with this disease that's very visible, especially on your face, you know, there's no amount of makeup that can cover that stuff up, I, I can tell you. Um, to be able to look in the mirror and see my real face without the scabs and the crusting and, and the... It, it was a miracle. It truly was a miracle. And I turned 40 that September and the center picture is me in my beautiful wig um, with my mom and dad. I threw myself a huge birthday party celebration. And then I decided that I was really lucky and I needed to give back. So I signed up with team and training, which is an arm of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. I jumped into the world of triathlons and uh, began my 10-year stint in raising money for cancer research by uh, participating in triathlons, which was an amazing, amazing experience. And I will tell you that um, I was never the fastest by any stretch of the imagination. 
And my claim to fame and my, I think one of the things I'm most proud of is I finished a half Ironman in 2004 and I was fifth from last. So I was pretty much out on the course for the whole eight hours of the day, except the beginning and the end by myself. But um, I didn't finish last. And it was really the culmination of being very grateful that I had come through this experience, which was really a 10 year time frame from diagnosis in 91 through 98 um, and actually going forward. But that was the intense period of time for me. And then for the next 10 years, from probably 2000 to 2010, I actually did that combination of electron beam radiation for tumors that would pop up and then interferon injections for six months. So I did that combo for a good 10 years thereafter. And quite frankly, since then, um, I've been in pretty good shape. I have patches. I have some patches and plaques on my foot. It's a pain in the neck. And, uh, but I'm so grateful. I am so grateful that A, I was able to access one of the best and most knowledgeable specialists and researchers in the world at the time. I was able to get treatment that worked for my disease. And I was able to really regain my life and to be able to give back. So after all of that with the triathlons and the team and training, I got connected with the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. So Dr. Stuart Lesson, who is the gentleman in the blue hat, was president of the foundation at the time. And the other gentleman in the blue shirt is Chris Ship, who was also on the board. And uh, Dr. Lesson became my physician after Dr. Eric Vonderheide, who you see in, in the other picture with me. Yes, that's me in dark hair. And Judy Jones, the founder of along with Dr. Stuart Lesson, the founder of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. And I was invited to Dr. Vonderheide's retirement party uh, with all of the physicians in Chicago. Judy snuck me in the back door. And I had the opportunity at the end of the dinner to get up in front of all of these physicians and my beloved Dr. Eric Vonderheide, who was my physician for 15 years in my disease, um, and say thank you. And I, that was such a privilege. And that really led to me becoming very active, an active member of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. And I joined the board in 2008 and served uh, on the board of directors. And then in 2011, I had the opportunity to leave my corporate job and come over to join the foundation as staff. And this is a little synopsis of how I like to look at my journey from being diagnosed with mycosis fungoides stage 1A in 1991, you know, out of the blue, the lightning bolt hits and you're on a whole new path through my really aggressive tumor stage that took me through 97 and 98, actually before then too. And then recovery and giving back from 2001 to 2010. And in the middle, jumping over into the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation Board of Directors in 2008. And now I get to be here as a patient and to be of service to all of you and to bring forward your voice into the bigger outer world. It's so important for us to raise the awareness of cutaneous lymphomas so that other people can get diagnosed faster, better, be able to bring the science back to you to help the pharmaceutical companies who are doing clinical trial understand what's important to the patients, to create better clinical trial protocols, and to work with the regulatory bodies like the FDA or the EMA to share with them what's really important to cutaneous lymphoma patients. And I have the privilege of, you know, I can spin my hat multiple ways. I can be the CEO of the foundation on one hand, or I can be a patient on the other hand, and I can be the voice of all of you. So it's such an honor and a privilege for me to be here and to share a little bit about my story and my adventure. And I hope that you know, that helps some of you know that you are not alone and we are all in this together. 
So I'll just finish up here by sharing a little bit, you know, about the foundation that you probably all know, but our big vision really is a life free of cutaneous lymphoma for everyone. Probably won't get there in my lifetime, but I think that's a really great vision for all of us to have. And for those of you who might not be familiar with what we do, I love this, all these pictures, right? The most exciting thing and the really best thing I get to do is to be with all of you and to connect. I can't wait till we go back to being in person. And I hope that I have the chance to meet everyone at some point in time, even if it's just via phone or email or on a virtual event. And if you've checked out our website, you know we updated it several years ago and to make it more accessible, easier to navigate, better ways of bringing you information. We're doing uh, this year, we've started doing these mini video series and we're building the playlist on the YouTube channel. So trying our best to bring sometimes complicated and complex information to your fingertips so that you have it available when you need it along your journey. And we're always open to hearing back from you. So if you've got ideas or thoughts or things that you think we can do better, let us know because we're here for you. And we also support research. And we had started with our Clarions Award back in the day. We've moved to our Catalyst Award. And if you've participated in any of our announcements, we announced our new Catalyst Award winners in July. And we look forward to having an update from those researchers on their work a little bit later in 2023. But that's also a way for us as patients to help facilitate the researchers who are doing such amazing and great work not only in developing new therapies, but we can't develop new therapies if we don't really fully understand the disease itself and how it functions and how it evades the immune system, how it grows. And so it's so important. And if you have an interest in supporting research and helping us, I, I encourage you to reach out to us. Um, you know, we definitely need funding to help to continue this program. And we look forward to being able to doing more for more researchers and supporting the young investigators to be able to share their work and, and to engage with the clinical community, which is also important as the clinicians and the researchers you know, finish their careers and retire. We need younger people coming into the field. So we also support the, the young researchers through our Young Investigator Awards. And finally, we launched a couple of years ago, actually right in 2020, when the pandemic was in full force and effect, our cutaneous lymphoma community connections. So if you haven't joined, I encourage you to join the platform. It is secure. It is private. It's no one can see your information. Um, it's, it's not like Facebook where other people can have access in the background. And it's really an opportunity and a place for you to share with each other you know, like you may have done today in the networking sessions, but it's an online format and we get to interact and engage and share our stories, share our ideas, share um, questions, right? That sometimes only another patient who's been through it can answer. So if you haven't joined the community, I really encourage you to do so because it's better if we're all there and we're all sharing and, and supporting each other. It's really another place in this day of technology where we can leverage the platforms to actually bring everybody connected in that virtual environment. And I had to put this picture in. The wonderful staff of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation, the women that I have the privilege and honor of working with, they will all not be happy that I share this picture, but we took this picture at our new office. We just moved offices in June. We have a small, a small office, um, but in outside of Detroit, Michigan, but Holly, Autumn, Deb and Sue and me, you know, we are here to serve you. And I can tell you that there is no way that I could do the work that I do without these amazing human beings who are so dedicated, give so much of their time, their energy, their talent, their expertise, 
Um, you may not always encounter everybody, but I wanted to show you the team. And then of course, we have an amazing board of directors that have that is made up of patients and clinicians who help us move the foundation forward. And as our global world changes and life changes, we have to be resilient. We have to be innovative. We have to be thinking on our feet. So we have to change and move forward so that we can better serve you. So with that, I will end our time together today. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for trusting us to bring you vetted clinical, the best information about cutaneous lymphoma, to connect all of us together in a global patient community so that we can bring our voice forward and share what's important to us. While the researchers are doing their work to understand the disease better and bring new therapies to market through our uh, industry partners, and to be able to say to the regulators and those folks, hey, these are important therapies and this is what it's really like to live with cutaneous lymphoma and why it's so important that everyone has access to new treatments, to old treatments, to specialty physicians. It's really important. So I thank you for your time today. And we're gonna finish up. I found this song and I think it speaks so beautifully and so inspired me as we create our global community, I'll sign off and turn it over and let you enjoy this beautiful global choir that was pulled together virtually from every corner of the world. As we sing together on behalf of all of us, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Take good care of yourselves. Bye for now. <laughs>